what do you think about like promoting Afro Latino identity or um, cause I noticed that's something like a, a goal of your YouTube yes. uh, is definitely like promoting Afro Latino identity. But um, do you feel like people understand that concept more or do you, you still find people who are very confused by the fact that you're both black and Latino? They don't wanna see me push the button when I'm spinning. They don't wanna see me living while they so offended. I don't understand it. They don't wanna see me spinning. They don't wanna see me written out the pen. ¿Qué tal mi gente? Welcome to another episode of My World. If this is your first time on my channel, I would like to invite you to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to stay updated with the latest of videos. So in this video, I actually want to share with you guys that I had someone by the name of Sarah that hit me up on Instagram and wanted to do an interview with me because you know she wanted to like um promote more of the afro latino culture to her students sarah is a teacher there in detroit she actually went to nicaragua you know when she was younger she ended up meeting a nicaraguan as well and end up married in there she was living in nicaragua for four years you know she just wanted me to tell my story and what it's like growing up in nicaragua and just basically the lifestyle and culture. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm gonna leave it here for you guys. Muchas gracias por la entrevista. Um, me emociona mucho hablar con, con vos. Y si puedes como presentarte, sería what? genial. Okay. Hola a todos. Mi nombre es Chris Myers. Soy de Bluefis, Nicaragua. Llevo viviendo en los Estados Unidos 14 años. He estado movilizándome en varios estados. Um, acabo de venir aquí a Houston hace un año y pues estoy alegre de poder hacer esta entrevista por ustedes. Great, thank you so much. So, can you share like a little bit about where you're from in Nicaragua so we can have some context? Okay guys, so I was born in Bluefields, Nicaragua, um, 1988, um, in this barrio called Ricardo Morales. Um, around those times then, in um, 1988, it was one of the worst hurricanes that ever happened, which was Hurricane Joan. I was only a month old, and that was the hurricane that destroyed all of Bluefields. Luckily, I'm still here. Um, but Bluefields, um, for those who don't know, is a small city probably around 50 or more thousand of population indigenous people it can be either rama mosquito sumo creole you got the mestizos um you know all of us have our differences and well in in blue fields for those who don't know as well you have like one of the largest afro descendant community in all of central america okay um so some of my students now that we know that you speak both Spanish and English, they were curious about which language was your first language. Okay, so my, my actual first language is English. Mm -hmm. So I born speaking English and as I grow older, that's when I start speaking Spanish. So in school, you had to go to school in Spanish? Well, in Bluefields, right? Since we're, we were conquered by the Spaniards, everything in in nicaragua is spanish every single subject so that is how i, I end up learning spanish probably around the, the age of 12 even though it was uh, we were surrounded by spanish as i get older that is when i that is when i learn so everything in nicaragua is in spanish like all the government all the schooling everything's in spanish but on the atlantic coast people primarily speak english However, they're forced to then learn Spanish because of sort of political reasons. Yes. If you walk around in Bluefields, you will mostly hear three languages, which would be the Mosquito, which would be the um, Spanish, and which would be the Creole. The only thing you will hear like um, Creole if it's mostly around us black people or Creole people. Got it. That was interesting. Yeah. Um, so most people would interpret your or just like automatically assume that you're either like jamaican or maybe like bahamian so 
In Bluefields, right, the Jamaican slave them had went over there in the 1700s, early 1700s. And that is how we became to be like having this accent because we just end up meshing together. Jamaicans are very popular anywhere you go. So now, as soon as someone hear that, that similarity in accent, you know, they will be like, oh, you're Jamaican, you know. And it's not only like people like, let's say, from the United States, even the, the rest of Caribbeans as well. So, like, I just came across this guy that he was from Haiti, and he thought I was Jamaican. Even, right. Jam even Jamaicans think I'm Jamaican. And when I tell them that I'm Nicaraguan, they'll be like, nah, you're not Nicaraguan, you are Yadi. I'll be like, nah, bro, I'm from Nicaragua. So, I noticed, because I've, I've been in Nicaragua and around like Patois speakers that you are speaking slower than you normally would with other Patois speakers. Can you talk about like, do you change your accent or like slow down or choose your words diff differently depending on your audience? Yes, I have to. Mm -hmm. If I go, if I go out in, in the street right now and I come across someone that is meeting me for the first time and they hear my accent, the first thing they're going to be like, huh? Huh? So, like that, like I'm used to it. So like I, I, as soon as I hear the first ha huh and the second ha, huh, I'll be like, okay then. So I need to just like slow down a little bit because they're not understanding what I'm saying, you know? And it's just something I just had to get used to over the years. Like sometimes I forget about it and then like I'll just catch up back. I'll be like, oh, like these people are not, they don't know me yet. <laughs> They don't, right, they don't have any context. They don't have no context. What's coming out of my mouth. Yes, nothing, absolutely. I have a couple more questions. You can go my, ahead. Like, so that um, Afro-Latinos. Yes. It kind of feels like, and this is just from some of my observations, that uh, Afro-Latino is like a new thing or like, oh, whoa, there's Afro-Latinos. This is like this identity that I've never heard of before. And it's kind of gaining some more traction and... Um, kind of pop culture, but obviously Afro-Latinos have been around since the 1500s. You know, it's it's an identity that's been around for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. What do you think about, like, promoting Afro-Latino identity or, because um, I noticed that's something like the goal of your YouTube yes. uh, is definitely, like, promoting Afro-Latino identity, but um, do you feel like people understand that concept more or... Do you, you still find people who are very confused by the fact that you're both black and Latino? People like find it like very confusing even if it's, if it's explained throughout it. So people have a big issue with me saying that I'm Afro-Latino because they feel like I'm still caught up in the slave mentality. Instead, of mm -hmm. they, instead they want me to say that I'm Afro-Nicaraguan or Afro-Caribbean or whatever the case may be that suit they, their needs. Mm -hmm. You know, but like I'm, I'm all of those things. Them, I'm Afro Caribbean. I'm Afro Nicaraguan. I'm Afro Latino. Like you know, I'm Hispanic. I'm black. You know, mm -hmm. and to be honest, like you know, a lot of a lot of us we don't know about our culture, so it's not like we can speak on it. So as we move around places and and start seeing people embracing their culture much more, like myself, mm -hmm. right? You just like them, but like. If they are that, I am that also, you know, so why can't I embrace it as well? Because in Nicaragua, we are not taught about our culture. We are we're taught about, you know, like all these things, just like the slavery time and this and that. I, di I didn't know anything about my culture growing up. And then I come over here and I start seeing how black embrace their, their blackness. I start seeing how like the, the some of the Afro Latinos out here just embrace them them um Afro Latinidad, you know? And I'll be like, Well, I'm actually one of them as well too. I want to be able to learn more about my culture and embrace it more and teach the people them so that, you know, like I'm not just like black only, you know, I can be all of those things in general and I just want people to understand it and accept me for who I am instead of just trying to say like, well, why can't you just be Afro Nicaraguan or Afro Caribbeans? But why can't I just be all of them if I'm all of them? It's a great point. So another question, you know, we've, you can see my Las Vidas Negras Importan. Um, mm -hmm. 
the school I work for and in my classroom, we often talk about you no know, race relations, um, the importance of like a Black Lives Matter movement, how it exists also in Latin America. And so the kids wanted to know what is like the difference between race relations in the United States and in Nicaragua? I feel like there is a big difference racism gonna exist everywhere anywhere you go but the difference that i noticed when i came here is was like the killing that is that is the biggest difference because like in nicaragua i have experienced my own personal share of racism but it have never come down to where someone just gonna get killed over here like it's just like a constant killing and and violence we don't even have violence it would be like mostly like words you know, so they would call right. me names, you know, because of my skin color, but like it never like exceed to, to violence unless maybe, you know, like I want it to be a violent since the racism is being thrown at me. But like I know who I am, you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't have to be offended of what somebody's saying if I know who I am as a person. Right. So and just for some context, like when you move to Managua, people in Managua aren't like necessarily white, but they're definitely not black. Yes. They're more of like a, a mixture between indigenous and European. And so the colorism in Nicaragua is like very strong, but subtle okay. sometimes. I mean, obviously people can be racist to your face, but also there's just other like people are not as pronounced about it, I guess, but they definitely treat people differently. Yes. Yes. Like, um, so one of the biggest thing, um, and it can be vice versa. I'm not just going to say like is is um is only a black thing because just so, let's say white can be racist against black, black can be racist against white. So in Nicaragua, right? I'm not, and I don't want to take this out of context or anything. Me, I would be considered black in Nicaragua, and let's say like you, your skin color, you would be considered a mestizo. So mm -hmm. the mestizos them is is mostly in um in Managua and as we um start going over to the city in Managua like it just start becoming more and more that is like they didn't want us there, you know what I'm saying? Like people mm -hmm. in blue fees already used to seeing us. The mestizos are already used to seeing us because we live together, but as mm -hmm. we move to the city, it start becoming a problem, and that is where the name calling start coming in. But like now. I feel like they're like um coming into our culture more and more as more um blue fees people is moving into the different into the cities and into the different departments as well. But um it's still there. People scared fear our skin color. So they're not just gonna say it straight up to us or anything like that. They might say it behind our back or, or show it in different type of ways, but it's there. Right. Yeah, and a part of the reason to my understanding is that people from Bluefields and from the coast move to Managua for job opportunities, yes. often ones that require people to speak English. Mm -hmm. So your skill of being able to speak English is highly valued, but you're also black, so that there's a tension there. Because yes. they want your abilities, but they don't necessarily want your culture. Definitely, definitely. Um, Now is is becoming like Americanized. And why I say that is because U.S. is bringing like their companies over there, which start building call centers. And most of the people them in the city, like you say, they don't speak English. In school, they only taught Spanish. And even though they give English, not a lot of them show interest to the English so it's not like if they know to speak it so now we as blueface people we get the opportunities to to use our english in the u.s companies and there is where you say bring tension but now um you know there is a lot of mestizos also that is taking since we're like living together now and stuff like that they're taking the english um more seriously and learning it and well now there is a lot of mestizo that is also speaking english now as well and everybody is actually working together that's interesting to hear and i'm glad that you know there's always in spite of the negativity there is often there are pockets of progress mm -hmm. happening definitely um you spoke about like living in blue fields as like a place where you sort of lived off of the land mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit more about that and how nature or like where you know your physical surroundings are really important in a place like Bluefields. 
Well, it's, it's really hard because like everybody knows that the reason why Nicaraguans leave Nicaragua is because of the economy. You know, mm-hmm. that is the main reason why people want to leave their country to go to, to migrate to other countries. It's not like we want to, but we have to if we're trying to find better opportunities. Uh, me growing up as a kid in, in Bluefields, it was really, really difficult because we was poor. We were really poor, you know. There was days where we might not have things to eat and there is like so much, so much of us might be living in one, under one roof. Let's say 12, 13 of us, you know what I'm saying? And uh-huh. like one bread, one bread have to be cut into so many pieces just for somebody to have something to eat. Um, you know, like my grandfather, my dad, like all of them have to be like going, waking up like really, really early in the morning just to go on fishing and then they take like days out there just before they can come back with stuff, you know, or we have like uh-huh. the farm. Then we go and catch the fishes, which would be our meat. And then, then we go like maybe to the farms and carrying like these big sacks with all these like um, different, um, what you call, we call them verduras then, you, vegetables Absolutely. and, and yeah. stuff like that, you know, just to be able to have something to eat during the week, you know. So that is mm-hmm. how we would basically gl- grow up. Um, other than that, in our lands, we would have like all these mango trees, we would have like the plantains, bananas, um breadfruits all these things them so even though we may not have our meat or anything like that you know maybe one day we don't have like the money to afford the meat we just eat the vegetables maybe we like some beans you know and that is how we like got along until you know like our parents start migrating to the u.s and that's how things start getting better yeah that that's something i noticed even still when i was living in nicaragua that people were um much more dependent on like the land around them Mm -hmm. and but because of that also had like a lot of connection to it too Mm -hmm. like fruits and vegetables especially fruits like those fruit trees like your season oh it's pataya season oh it's mango season those types of things so that the the fruit also like marks the time of the year definitely Um, what what fruit or like food from bluefields do you miss the most everything like everything <laughs> like i'm i'm so nicaraguan you just don't understand like I, i'm a hundred percent nicaraguan i come over here and it was like so difficult to be able to like um eating like these foods them so like for me to feel closer to to home i would have to go like to maybe a spanish restaurant you get me just to be able to eat something Spanish, even though it's not exactly like from Bluefields, it's still Spanish because I'm I'm also used to the um to the Managua food or to the um past, you know so to the city food so, but like in Bluefields is mostly like we we live off like the seafood, you know so everything that got to do with shrimp, fish, um um lobster, anything that got to do from the ocean, that is what. That is what I miss the most, and even until this day, you know what I'm saying. I'm here in the United States. I'm still searching for those things, them just to feel closer to home. Have you found a Nicaraguan population in in Houston? Yes. As I start doing my YouTube channel, I um went and I live in Puerto Rico, and I came here to Houston, and I met the first person I met was someone that. They found, he he was born here in the USA, but his um his dad is from Bluefields, and oh, then cool. he just present me all his family, and then I just met and then I just went to this um Nicaraguan place it's called La Fritanga, and then I came across some more Nicaraguans, and then I went to this other place called Antojitos, and then I'm just like surrounded by Nicaraguans now. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I was actually just talking to my husband about how there's. A really huge population of Nicaraguans in Houston. So I didn't even you... I didn't even know that. I thought like I was gonna be like just like in Florida, you know, where I just don't come across Nicaraguan people, and it is weird, you know, because not it's not everybody share my culture, you know. So like mm-hmm. that's the only way for me to feel close to home. If I'm around my people, or if I'm doing things that like eating the food, or you know, listening to the music and stuff like that, that's the only way I can continue feeling connected. That's so that reminds me of how um, you talk about being with people is how you feel connected. Can you talk about the difference between um, 
how people here in the United States versus like in Nicaragua or Nicaraguan people sort of interact with their families. For example, um, here in Michigan, within white culture, like you could live next door to someone and never even really know who they are. Um, but when I was in Nicaragua, I felt like I couldn't even like eat breakfast without saying hi to like 10 people. <laughs> So we're like very family oriented. Me growing up in Bluefields, I know everybody, everyone. You know, like the house next to me to probably like 15 houses down. It doesn't matter where it is. Like everybody know each other because it's like the, the, the city is small. So like everybody just live together. I can just, it, it could be necessarily that you make breakfast. You live in Bluefields, right? You make uh -huh. breakfast and you just see me, yo, come come have you might not even know me but you know my 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 parents or my grandma and stuff like that so uh -huh. that is how we grow up we just grow up giving because everybody knows so that is hard you know so like if somebody uh -huh. have and you don't have we give you know we're we're always giving but over here everything was so different in my first year coming here so like the very first time i put foot and i passed christmas it was like one of my the worst Christmas I ever passed in my life, you know, and I cried, yeah. I cried to my mom and I was be like, yo, I need to go back Bluefields, I need to go back home, I can't live here, she was like, give it a try, I was like, nah, I can't, I can't, 14 years later, here I am still, <laughs> but don't get it twisted, I still miss my hometown and I still want to go back and live there because like, um, it's everything to me, it's everything. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that from other Nicaraguans, too, that they just, like, love where they're from. I never had experienced or met people who just had such love from the place that they were from. And the only reason that they have chosen to leave is, like, because of economic issues. That's the only reason. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason, because if you look at it, we have everything but money. That's beautiful what you said about, like, if we have... And you don't have, we give. Yes. Just we're always, we're always giving. I definitely noticed that and had to change some of my behaviors because I would just compliment people on different things. Like, oh, I like your hat. And they would be like, oh, do you want it? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I don't want your hat. I'm just making yes. it tight. So I had to kind of like stop complimenting directly because I felt like people were, um, I didn't want to take their things. I don't need them. <laughs> I was just sitting there nice. <laughs> looks good on you or whatever we're, we're just givers yo nicaraguans are givers like it, it doesn't matter if we don't have or anything like we would give is it, it, it can be the last plate of food we would give awesome thank you thank you sarah thank you. you're welcome <laughs> i enjoyed this too so it was really it was really dope it was really dope and thank, i just want to thank you as well for sharing your story with me and you know just loving our culture in general Life too fly to be stressing. Stressin'. Throw trouble away and take your blessing. Blessin'. Every day is a new lesson. Blessin'. I'm not perfect, but I am progressing. Blessin'. Always shoot my shot, they step up, then I fade away. Music like the only how to get me through the day.